Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the price of memory at the moment, especially DDR4, seems to be so competitive that if you're thinking about going for 32 gigs instead of 16, and you have the money to do so, you may as well. I recently got offered 32 gigs of 3200 MHz Corsair RAM as a trade for an old first gen Ryzen CPU, and needless to say I took it. It's Vengeance LPX just like the 16 gigs I was already using, so I've gone from 2 8 gigabyte modules to two 16 gig ones. I've definitely noticed a difference in how snappy multitasking feels and while rendering a video isn't any quicker with my setup, the project preview playback is a lot smoother and I can do more in the background while I keep DaVinci Resolve open. I'd say I use a pretty modest rig in comparison to a lot of other YouTubers. I have an i5 12400F and RTX 3050. I'd call it mid-range myself, but officially it's modern entry level. And while it can still handle all my gaming needs, I have been wondering how it would benefit from this DDR4 upgrade. I mean, if we're just gaming with literally nothing else going on in the background, does a PC like this actually perform better with the extra memory installed? Let's find out. My answer from a content creation and multitasking standpoint is already yes if you have the budget, don't get me wrong, but will gaming on this entry level machine show any major changes? As I said at the start, I have a modest rig compared to a lot of other tech testers, so results may and probably will vary with higher end machines, as well as if you go from slower to higher speed memory. May as well start off with one of the heavy hitters here. This is The Last of Us Part 1. This isn't a particularly demanding area of the game by any means, but as you can see by the RAM usage in MSI Afterburner here, well, the system isn't shy about using at least 16 when possible. We do have to think that there are other processes and whatnot going on in the background as well, but in terms of performance, the only real change here was with that 1%, sorry, 0.1% low figure, which was a little bit lower with 16 gigs installed. I'm sure this figure will change as we move between various areas of the game. So this isn't representative of the entire title, of course, but there is already a difference to be noticed, even with these specs. Call of Duty Warzone 2, 1080p here with Ultra. Now, the performance here was pretty much exactly the same. There was a tiny bit of variation with the 0.1% low, but nothing that you'll actually notice or feel, at least I didn't with my time um, with this one. 87 FPS on average with Ultra is pretty respectable anyway, and the game performs well with 16 gigs. I'm not for a second saying that 16 gigs... Um, isn't a good choice in 2023 because it absolutely is especially if you're on a tight budget nothing wrong with 16 gigs of ram at all make sure you do get dual channel memory of course two eight gigabyte sticks as that will be a lot better especially if you're using uh, amd integrated graphics for example there you're probably going to see a lot more difference than you are here in Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, we're using 1080p with the high preset. With 32 gigs of RAM in the system, the average was 96, with a 1% low of 62 and a 0.1% low of 47. With just two 8 gigabyte modules in the PC, we're seeing 94 FPS on average, so 2 FPS lower. The 1% low was identical, and the 0.1% low was quite a bit lower. I did notice a a couple of little hitches here and there that weren't present when using more memory so that's worth bearing in mind though this wasn't a consistent or constant problem at all just one or two more hiccups than there were with the higher amount of ram cyberpunk 2077 now over 60 fps with both configurations i actually saw a slightly higher average with 16 gigs this is after running the in-game benchmark the one percent low was very similar and the 0.1% low, yeah, there was a bit of a problem here with 16 gigs, nothing major. Again, just like in Spider-Man, a couple more hitches here and there, which reflected pretty badly on the 0.1% low. But for the most part and the majority of the time, these won't occur. It's Say if you suddenly go into a more crowded area, you might notice a bit more of a dip that lasts for about half a second if that. So it really isn't problematic at all. It's, it's just something that sticks out on the figures 
During actual gameplay though, not so much. Forza Horizon 5, very well optimized. This does absolutely fine with 16 and 32 gigs. Not much of a difference here between all of the figures. The average and percentile lows were slightly better, probably within sort of margin of error territory really with the 32 gigs of memory. So not much to report here. This is very enjoyable and playable with either 16 or 32 gigs of DDR4. Here we are then in the Witcher 3. This is with the next gen patch applied. Performance again, pretty much identical. No complaints from me, even in busier areas. Um, like Oxenfur and Novigrad, no problems whatsoever here, even with the high settings. The game looks fantastic, no real stutters at all to speak of. Yeah, a very playable experience in The Witcher 3 next gen with both 16 and 32 gigs of RAM with the i5 12400F and 3050 PC. Red Dead Redemption 2 next. This is from 2018, I believe, on PC. Perhaps 2019, was it? The PC release? Anyway, ultra textures with everything else on medium. The percentile lows as well as the averages were slightly better with more memory in the system. Again, this is taken from the in-game benchmark. So this benchmark goes through Saint-Denis at the end, probably the most intensive area. I always use actual gameplay because it gives you a better idea of whether or not you can pick up these little dips and drops here and there. Dips and drops that didn't really occur all that much when it came to playing on this hardware. Another solid result either way. Hogwarts Legacy is another heavy hitter. I've saved this one till last. We had The Last of Us, which can be problematic uh, at the beginning. But now we have Hogwarts Legacy 1080p medium. Of course, the 3050 could be seen as a limiting factor in some of these new games, more so than the RAM. Uh, not just that, but of course we have the 8 gigs of VRAM. Um, this isn't exactly the best example of where I should really complain about VRAM, it's just optimization on more than any, anything, but as we move forward, games are going to get more and more thirsty in terms of memory. 81 FPS on average for both systems here, however, with a 1 and 0.1% low that was very similar with 16 and 32 gigs of RAM. Not as much stutter as I thought there would be. I think keeping things at medium is definitely your best bet with a PC like this. Perhaps you could push the textures too high, though you may see a few more frame dips. Overall though, with my PC, and I can only speak from my experience and from a purely gaming perspective, really not much difference in most titles. The, the biggest difference you're going to see is probably with 0.1% lows when you change your memory. If you go from 16 to 32 gigs of basically the exact same memory, where you're going to notice that difference most is with those 0.1% figures. That seems to be based on my findings anyway. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope as always, it's been helpful. If you can't afford 32 gigs of RAM where you live, it's way more expensive or for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter. Don't worry about it too much. 16 gigs is still fine for a budget build in 2023. Absolutely. If you've enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.